Welcome to the next demonstration, which is demonstrating Poodle's ability to zip up files and allow for offline translation, as well as demonstration of the offline translation tool. Please bear in mind that the offline translation tool is still very, very early prototypes, um, so I would consider it alpha software, but it demonstrates some of the um, the practicalities of translating offline. We're also aiming at a tool that implements most of the functionality that already exists in Poodle and will be even richer than Poodle can be. Poodle makes use of the Translate Toolkit and the Offline Translation Editor will also make use of the Translation Toolkit. So there's the ability to reuse features in both. Here we're looking at the same page of of pretend Mozilla files that we used for the online translation. This translator, however, is translating offline. So the first thing they want to do is get a zip file and and save it to their computer. They'd want to translate offline for a few reasons. One might be that they work faster in an offline tool and don't like the delay that's inherent in on the internet. Let's save it to our desktop. The second reason would be that perhaps they're using an internet cafe to get their files. They want to put it on a memory stick, take it home and translate. Or bandwidth is really expensive wherever they live and they can't sit online all day or it's really, really slow and tedious. So we're unzipping the, the files that we want to translate. Let's look at them now. Okay, they're the five files that were on Poodle that we can now translate. We have built-in file association with the offline editor. So just by double clicking on it, we should see our editor. And there we are, we're setting in our editor. And let's begin translating. We can translate this quite quickly. Save the file. Let's move on to the next one. Now you can see some of the advantages we had in Poodle, which were suggestions of translations, are not yet in the offline translation editor, but these will come very quickly. Other features that we're looking at are proper syntax highlighting. So when you have snippets of HTML or XML, those will be highlighted. Things such as translation memory, etc. will also be there. And there will also be the ability of the translation memory to be able to access a server directly. Um, that's a server that's perhaps um, on online across the web. So we have a combination of being offline with a standalone tool, but still connecting translation memory or to upstream your translations. There we go, we've finished up the, tr the main translations we want. Let's create a, an archive. The key thing to remember is we have to emulate the structure of what we saw in Poodle. So let's go back to Poodle. We want to now include our updated files and let's upload them. And there you go. Our translations have been taken out of the zip file, integrated into what's online and we're ready to go. We're ready to share our translations. We're ready to have them managed upstream, etc. One thing to be aware of, we regard um, contributions such as this um, with a bit of caution. So someone who's uploading something and it's untranslated, that will become the translation if they have upload rights and translate rights. If there's an existing translation, there's very little way for us to tell what, whether the translation that has been submitted is better than what's there already. 
someone might have edited it in the meantime. In that case, the person's translations are submitted as suggestions, and then they can review the suggestions um, and accept or reject any that are in conflict. But there you go. Someone has translated offline, they've contributed their translations, and they've been able to contribute to Mozilla even in a situation where there's low bandwidth.